Good morning. My name is Ben Tanner. I'm Wayne Tanner's youngest son. I'm not the most eloquent public speaker, so please bear with me. I know most of you know the story of what occurred on the early morning hours of January 12, 1975, and I'm not going to rehash that part of the story. And this is not to take anything away from the meaning of this day for Ron Parker or Mrs. Parker, but to add to the memory of that event that changed so many of our lives. What you don't know is what happened after. That's what I'd like to talk about this morning. On the morning of January 12, 1975, I was seven years old. I remember vividly my mother, uh, who was here today. Thanks for coming, Mom. She came into me and my brother Carrie's room and woke us. And I remember thinking, we must have done something wrong. Because it was a Sunday morning, and in our house on Sunday mornings, she wasn't going to wake us up early because when we were up, we were usually tearing something up. So she let us sleep in dogs lie. She told us we needed to get up, get moving, because my dad needed to talk to us. And my second thought was, is we must have lost or destroyed something of his, because very rarely did he want to talk to us. You see, dad worked the midnight shift and we didn't see him um, that early in the morning. It was usually later in the afternoon by the time he got up and got moving. So we jumped up ran into the living room where he sat us down and he told us what had happened. He started off by saying that this wicked man had shot and killed his friend, Ron Parker. He went on to say that he, this evil person tried to kill him as well and that there was a shootout between the two of them. Dad went into great detail with us about the running gun battle and when he told us about the bullet hole that was in the star on the door of his patrol car. Me and my brother jumped up, ran outside because we wanted to see it. Well, I can remember seeing that hole and my first thought was how scary it must have been to hear that 45 round hit that door with my father right behind it. He told us he continued to shoot until the subject was down and wasn't getting back up. My father, wherever I was young, would often use the term duty bound. And in my mind, duty bound meant no matter what, you complete the mission, even if the odds are against you. For him to stand his ground as that bullet hit right in front of him, not drive away, not look for more cover, but to finish the job, in my opinion, is the epitome of duty bound. He never wavered, he stayed the course. The next couple of days were a blur to me, but I recall hearing people say things like, only Wayne Tanner could have hit this guy three times, left-handed out of a moving car. Or when the FBI showed up at our house to show us pictures of this evil man's family, in fear of him, them coming and trying to uh, retaliate against my father. My father endured a lot of life-changing events to include his disability that he suffered while serving as United States Marine. But this one event, this one event in January stayed with him the rest of his life. I recall the first time this wicked man came up for parole. My father, in true Wayne Tanner form, said, turn him loose. Maybe I'll get the chance to finish the job. To Miss Brenda, you are an inspiration to us all. And if my dad was here today, I know he would say thank you for staying the course and fighting so hard to keep this killer from ever seeing the light of day. And to those of you who have made this a personal fight, I would like to say thank you. In conclusion, I'd just like to say to my dad, mission accomplished. 
most boys grow up thinking their fathers are heroes. I don't have to think it. I knew mine was. Thank you.